Good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everyone doing on this beautiful Friday? We have made it <laughs> to the end of the week. Well, it may be the end of the week for you. Your sister got one more day. <laughs> I'm grateful this morning that God allowed me, that God granted me another day to be before you. That means God is not finished with me. And if you hop on live, if you come across this live, that means God is not finished with you. That means you're not a finished product. I'm here to continue reading our strength for each day. I'm here to give you your Friday strength. You may say, well, Yolanda, how is those devotional, how are they strength? If you apply them, they give you strength. It gives you wisdom. It gives you understanding. They'll give you peace. They'll instruct you how to walk. They'll instruct you how to talk. They'll instruct you how to move. They'll instruct you how to handle things. It'll instruct you how to let go of things. But you have to apply it. You can't just hear it. You got to also do it. God said he don't want us to just be hearers of his word. He want us to put his words, his word into action. That's how you start to see results. Once you start practicing it, you start seeing results in your life. It'll work. But it, it will only work if you work it. And the title of today's devotional, if you did not see, and that is The Danger of Anger. The Danger of Anger. And the reference scripture can be found in Proverbs 14 and 29. Proverbs 14 and 29. And it reads as follows. Whoever is slow to anger has great understanding. But he who has a hasty temper exalts folly. I'm going to read that again. Whoever is slow to anger. That means you, you understand the danger has great understanding. But he who has hasty temper, can't nobody say nothing to you? Can't nobody look at you? You ready to pop off, as they say. You ready to give someone a piece of your mind. You ready to tell somebody where they can go. Exalts folly. And the definition of folly is the state or quality of being foolish, lack of understanding, or sense. <laughs> Let me read that definition again. The definition of folly, the state or equality, okay, let me start over, the state or quality of being foolish, a lack of understanding, or sense. Let me get into this. Most of us find a reason each day to be angry with someone or about something. Life is filled with imperfections and injustice, but anger doesn't solve them. It only makes us miserable. When you're walking around miserable, when you're walking around anger, when you're angry, when you're walking around bitter, you're affecting you. Because oftentimes what I'm learning is that you can be angry, you can be upset, you can be bitter with someone. They going on about their life. They doing them, as they say. They going on vacation. They doing everything that they want to do. They, they ain't even thinking about you. And you sitting at home bitter, angry, mad, frustrated. It's not worth it. The word of God instructs us not to let the sun go down on our anger. <laughs> you know, you see that sun start going in. <laughs> you better go get it right. You better go fix it. You better go turn it around. You better not close your eyes. 
That's that sign. Because if we do, we give the devil a foothold in our lives. Ephesians 4, 26 through 27. Anger is an emotion, is an emotion that can, that can and should be controlled. We are in control of our anger. Love is not touchy or easily offended. Not when you love. It, it, it'll take you a minute to get the anger. But it is long-suffering and generous in mercy. One of the best ways to stay happy is to avoid anger. If you know a situation, if you know an individual, a family member, a co-worker, a church member, yes, church member, if you know it brings anger out, it brings this, this unsettling feeling, it's said to avoid it. Avoid it until God helps you to deal with it. And oftentimes, dealing with it is not dealing with them, it's dealing with you. <laughs> it's dealing with you. Why? Because the life you save is going to be your own. How is he going to save me if he's dealing with them? No, I need him to deal with me because I, I, I'm trying to make it in. According to the writer of today's scripture, the person who is hasty to become angry is foolish. But the one who is slow to anger is wise and has great understanding. If you are angry with anyone, I urge you to completely forgive that person. Let it go, whatever it is, whatever, whatever they done, whatever they said, it's not worth you missing the kingdom. I've, I've been saying this. God has been giving me to speak that. It's not worth you ending up in hell. By doing so, you will set yourself free. It's not about their freedom. <laughs> it's your freedom and you may say well Yolanda I've tried that and it didn't work as long as you, it may not look like it worked because how it appears to be but as long as you know from your heart that you did your part you free to move on you free to move forward I know what I'm talking about. I've had to do that. When you know you've done all that you can do, there's nothing left for you to do but dust your feet and continue to move forward because you're not in control of no one else's actions. You're not in control of no one else's decision. You're not in control of how, how someone else chooses um, to continue to treat you. You're not in control of that. You want to be free today. Let go of that anger. Let it go. Let go, let go of that bitterness. Let go of that hatefulness. That hate, you know, that you have in your heart for someone. Let that stuff go. It's killing you. It's not hurting them. They on vacation. They laying out on the beach. They drinking margaritas. Why are you sitting back angry? Why are you sitting back bitter? Why are you sitting back frustrated? Why are you sitting back mad? They said they living their best life, but they just living life. Your best life is when you accept Jesus Christ. You just living life. Remember that anger doesn't make any situation better. It only makes you miserable. Let me say that again. Remember that anger, it doesn't make a situation better. You know how when you're angry with some with someone, you're upset with them, and you think, just because you don't speak to them, <laughs> just because you don't acknowledge them, 
that you're doing something big. You done had other people to turn against them. Oh, you think you done did something? But you still have to treat people right. You still have to love them in spite of the lies they told, the people that they turned against you. They still have to deal with that. God's still going to deal with them. on it. God is going to vindicate you. Keep your heart right. Keep your heart right. Make sure you doing right. Make sure you're in the right spirit. And God is going to vindicate you. Don't you try to do it. Because you'll just mess it up. Allow the father to do it. No one knows how to correct their own children than the parent. Because I may want to come to your house and I may want to handle little Lily or Justin. But see, I may be in the wrong spirit when I do it. <laughs> but when the parent does it, it's out of love. See the difference? That's why we have to allow God to handle one another, each other. That's not our job to do. Although sometimes, you know, <laughs> we want to touch the hem, but that's not our job to do. Our job is to love them and pray for them. That's it, that's all. That God touches their heart, that God softens their heart, that they're able to let things go. Let bygones be bygones. Because we got to understand. We got to stand. In front of a just God. That's going to judge us righteously. He's not going to ask you about me. And he's not going to ask me about you. You're going to have to stand before him and tell him what you did with the life that he gave you. It's not going to do you any good to bring up what I did, what I didn't do, who I wasn't, who I should have been, what I should have did, how many mistakes I made. He's going to ask you about you. He may listen for a second because he know you need to get it off your chest. <laughs> he gonna say now that we got that out the way let's talk about you now what are you gonna be able to say about you how are you gonna be able to convince God to allow you to come into his kingdom with your nasty heart with your nasty spirit with your unforgiveness how are you going to be able to convince him to allow you to come in? To enter into those gates? See, people think because they have great influence here that they can influence God, that they can manipulate God. God ain't like man. God ain't like man. The danger of anger. It's dangerous to walk around angry because anger causes you to do things, act a certain way. Anger is a burden. Anger is weight. There's nothing good about walking around angry. Let me see. It's a couple of scriptures I'm going to drop. It's a couple of scriptures. Uh, give me a second. I'm going to drop. The definition of anger is a strong feeling or of displeasure and 
Hold on. Okay, a strong feeling of displeasure. And oh, belligerence aroused by a wrong wrath. Wrath. Trying to see. Anyway, it's a strong feeling. It's a strong um, emotion of displeasure. Let me see what this says. I when these ads be popping up. I tell you, anger is a strong emotion that you feel when you think that someone has behaved. In an unfair, cruel, or unaccepted, unacceptable way. That's what anger is. And anger will cause things to start flaring up in your body too. So we have to be careful about allowing anger to sit in our hearts, in our spirits. That when you see that person, you're trying to find a way. How can I take them down? How can I bring hurt? How can I inflict some hurt? How can I inflict some pain? Look at them. They think they something. They think they somebody. And the devil, will, if you're not careful, he'll have you to start plotting. Oh, I know ain't nobody. Ain't nobody. I know ain't nobody going to be honest and, 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 and say that. You thinking about how you can go to that boss? <laughs> you thinking about how you can go? To the pastor, the preacher. You thinking about how you can go to that family member? Because you ready to stir up some stuff. Because you sick of that person thinking that they somebody. The couple of scriptures that I wanted to drop. And the first one is. Ecclesiastics 7 and 9. And I'm going to read that. Do not be quickly provoked in your spirit. For anger resides in the lap of fools. Let me read that again. Do not be quickly provoked. You can't be that sensitive. That every time somebody say something, you, you, you're angry. You're just mad at the world. You're madder than a junkyard dog. You need to pray and ask God to help you deal with that. Because that anger is going to lead you somewhere. <clears throat> Do not be quickly provoked in your spirit. For anger resides in the lap of fools. Let me see what I have. No, I think that's one it didn't have. Okay. That's one scripture. Okay. The other one is. Let me get it here. I'm going to be out y'all's way. This one, this one was a quick one. The other one is James 1. <clears throat> James 1, 19 and 20. I don't know if I may read 20. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak. Have you ever been that person that Someone is talking and you already preparing your answer, your response. How are you going to come back? Oh, I know ain't nobody going to be honest <laughs> with that. Because, you you know, you ready. Instead of just saying, let me hear this person out. Because if I'm thinking about what I'm going to say, I'm going to miss what they're saying. I'm going to get something wrong. Now you got a situation that didn't even need to be. But because you want to be heard and you don't want to listen, now you done made a mountain over, you know, <laughs> you done made a mountain into something for no reason. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. That's not God. That's not Christ-like. 
when you're walking around angry, when you're walking around bitter. Because how can you love? He said, love and kindness have I drawn thee. Who can you draw when they can't even talk to you? When they can't stand next to you? When they can't even look at you? You said, well, Yolanda, you just don't understand what I've been through. But I know if you go to hell, I know what you're going to go through. It's not worth it. Pray. If your weakness is anger, pray and ask God to take that anger away so that you can have joy, so that you can have peace, so that you can enjoy life, so that you can enjoy people. Let me read this. When we talk too much and listen too little, we communicate to others that we think our, our ideas are, mu are much more important than theirs. James wisely advises us to reverse this process. Put a mental stopwatch on your conversation and keep track of how much you talk and how much you listen. When people talk with you, do they feel that their viewpoints and ideas have value? When you allow others to speak what's on their heart, to speak what's on their mind, you want them to feel that what they had to say was important too. What they're bringing to the table has value too. Sometimes we make things all about us. We got all the right answers. We got, all, we got the right idea. We know how to make it better. We know how to make it great. Stop looking for all the credit. Stop looking to be the only one acknowledged. Stop always looking for a pat on the back. He said, what you do in secret, he'll reward you openly. I don't know why I went there. Well, Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's not about you. He said, we shouldn't think more of ourselves than we ought. Why? Because we're nothing without him. My Lord. <laughs> These verses speak of anger that erupts when our egos are bruised. Egos. I am hurt. So when people say they are hurt, they got a right to lash out. They got a right to be nasty. They got a right to be bitter. They got a right to, you know, eye for an eye and a two. I, I'll get it. I'll get it. Who they think they are. They must all know who I am. They must all know my influence. My opinions are not being heard. <clears throat> These are the things that we say to justify us being nasty. When injustice and sin occur, we should become angry because others are being hurt. But we should not become angry when we fail to win an angry an argument or when we feel offended we should not we shouldn't get so angry and bitter because someone didn't agree someone didn't follow someone didn't obey you told them to stand and they, they continue to sit what but this is the stuff that you see now You can't hardly, folks are just easily offended these days. And I mean, you can't hardly, you can't hardly say nothing. Everybody's pressed out, um, full anxiety, don't know what's going to happen from day to day, walking on edge, ready to explode at any moment. You can say good morning. They'll say what's good about it. <laughs> like what? <laughs> you, you know, you don't even know how to respond to that. 
God bless you. He ain't blessing me. He must be blessing you. What? You know, sometimes, sometimes you just don't know what to say. I done got to the point I don't hardly say nothing. The honey, they taking folks out of here. <laughs> I, I don't do too much looking at folks. They ever be talking about what you're looking at. Lord, help us. Lord, Lord, Lord. But we should not become angry when we, when we, when we fail to win an argument or when we feel offended or neglected. Those are not reasons to become angry. Selfish anger never helps anybody. When you're angry because you didn't get to speak, you wasn't put on the program, you didn't get that promotion, you didn't get that job, they didn't call your name first, they didn't pick you first, they didn't put you on the board, making it all about you. Change your anger. Ask God to help you to get rid of that anger. Because just as it said, that anger, it makes you miserable. There's a lot of things I had to ask God to help me to let go of. I was to that point too that if I was in the room breathing the same air at the same time. I just felt this very unsettling, uneasy spirit. And I knew it wasn't of God. I didn't know how to shake it. I didn't know how to deal with it. And I said, Lord, I, I need you to help me. Because if you don't help me, I can't do it on my own. I was involved in some things in my church. Choir. Usher board. I was an usher. And I would still have these feelings and these emotions that would come up that I knew that was not pleasing to God. But I tried to continue on until one day I said, I can't, I don't know about nobody else, but how I'm feeling, I can't keep doing that. I got to take my gift to the altar. I got to take what I'm doing for the church. I got to set it aside. Because there are some things that I need to deal with in the inside of me. And I refuse to keep showing up Sunday after Sunday and knowing my heart was not where it should be. I knew God wasn't pleased because I wasn't. So I let those, I got out of those things. And I said, now, Lord, I, I, I need you to help me. I don't want to continue to feel, I don't, I don't want to feel this feeling every time I'm in close <laughs> connection with this individual. I, I, I don't want that. I want to be able to be free in my mind, in my heart, in my soul, in my spirit. And I meant that thing. And one day, I, I couldn't even tell you when it happened. But God took that away. God fixed it. Until I didn't even, I didn't even acknowledge it until one day he brought it to my remember. Remember when? You didn't feel that. You wasn't thinking that. And I said, Lord, you did it. So I'm telling you, it can be done. If you're going to church and you go to church and you feel some type of way, someone done you wrong, someone lied on you, 
Someone looked at you, you think the wrong way? Ask God to take that bitterness out of you. Ask him to remove that anger so that you can have the peace that you need to thrive. Whatever you're doing, set it aside. It'll be there. Set it aside and let God deal with your heart. Because God ponders your heart, not your works. Let me say that again. God ponders your heart, not your works. Don't get caught up in your works. That your heart is tainted. Get your heart right. Because when you get that heart right, things will begin to flow. I got to hop off. <laughs> I pray something was said that will cause you to take a step back and say, you know what? I've been dealing with some, I have some anger issues. There are some things that have made me angry that has made me bitter. And I can't stand to see the sight of them. You need to pray. You need to get before God. First of all, ask him to forgive you for housing that anger, for sheltering that anger, for paying rent for that anger. And let him start to deal with you from the inside out. Because there's something within you. The reason why you can't let it go. The reason why you can't move past it. That's what God is going to deal with in you. Again, search your heart. Don't search minds. Search your heart. And if your weakness is anger, take it to God. Take it to him. I pray that something was said. I pray that you search your heart. I hope whatever you're holding, that you release it. Piece of hair. That you release it and allow God to be God. Speak life over your circumstance, your situation, your friends, your foes. Those that said that you'll never amount to anything, go anywhere. Those that said that you would never make it out. Those that said you would never make it through. Those that said that you would always be an alcoholic. Those that said you would always be a drug addict. Those that said you would always be a, a fornicator. Those that said that you would always be a home wrecker. Speak life over them as well. You have nothing to lose, but everything to gain. The danger of anger. Let's release that today. Let's let go of that today. Let's put that behind us today. See, I'm not going to go another day another month, another year, I'm releasing it today. Father, I give it to you because it don't belong to me. I'm not paying another month's rent. I'm not sheltering it another day. Today, I open up the doors of my heart and I'm releasing it. I am evicting anger today. Serve anger. Give anger that eviction notice, that pink slip, and let it go. Until next time, everyone have an amazing day. I pray that you have a safe weekend until we meet again. Have an awesome day. God bless. Thanks for hopping on. Thanks for hanging in there. Thanks for coming all the way in the room. And thanks to those that's, that will come that will come and watch 
later. And those that just stuck their head in the door, I thank God for you as well.